and welcome back. Let's, uh, let's grab some lunch with, uh, lovely fan favorite Polly. You take your seat, and if you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost more interested in their phones than they are in you. <laughs> no way. And you do know better, and you know that, yes, that's exactly what's happening right now. Mm, it's nothing personal, Turpentine J. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything you want. That's my fetish, too. Not buying things for people, having people buy things for me, duh. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Mm, still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Our cash flow instantly stops. Besides, being handed everything you want on a platter... In this case, the platter being an online money transferring platform is almost mm, boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much cocaine as I am right now, but I see what you mean. If we could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe we would get interesting and we could continue to profit even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, how interesting do you think this business actually is? Since he's so obsessed with us, we should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. I don't know. A weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all, but I want to start making real mm, mm, money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos! Hmm, seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander could give them a nudge in the right direction. Um... Let's go, uh, chaos here. Tell him to marry a llama. Oh my god, yes, this is everything to me! I actually had a dream just like that one time. Except it wasn't a llama, it was an alpaca. And it wasn't a wedding, it was a bar mitzvah. <laughs> I too commonly dream about alpaca bar mitzvahs. <laughs> but other than that, it was exactly the same. Yeah, I don't think this is my scene. I'm going to check on my illegal law firm. Catch you mm, weirdos later. I'm texting the financial slave right now, telling him to marry a llama. Oh, he's already typing, let's see. Turpentine jet. You will never believe this. It turns out that the financial slave has actually been talking to a llama for a few months. Now through a llama monster dating site. He says he's a commitment phobe and never really defined the terms of his relationship with the llama. And he keeps introducing the llama as, quote, a friend. But he knows now that it's because he was just scared of being hurt. He's taking this as a sure sign that it's the time to be brave and commit to the lava, and they're headed to the city hall for the ceremony right now. Of course, he says he'll have to take his leave of our group chat since his heart and wallet now belong to another. Ah, oh, shit. Specifically, a lava. Ah, isn't that the sweetest love story you've ever heard? I'm so glad we get to make it happen together. That is the sweetest love story you've ever heard. Or something, but hey. Maybe you and Polly will end up having a love story of your own. I can only really, really hope. Shit, it's last evening before the prom. Let's go. Um, should I tempt fate and try outdoors yet again? Ah, you know, fuck it. Fortune favors the bold. At the rave, one small with magical Latino cat. Oh, don't! Come on, one small, small magical Latino cat is awesome. <laughs> you laugh so hard at him that you somehow steal plus two fun from him. Hooray! <laughs> you come to as if you had been knocked out or drugged or something to the sound of. Welcome back to season two of the interdimensional. Oh, this fucking guy. That's it. Today's competitors are last season's fly in the cogs. Turpentine J and army of sexy werewolves. Hooray. 
What's up, losers? For the last time, fuckbench, I'm not a werewolf. Perhaps not, but you do have a fiery temperament, wolf-like drive, and killer abs, so it's close enough. Yeah, bro, one of us, one of us. I thought we were going to do a sports game. Sports game. Sports game. We are, my dear sweet army of sexy werewolves. Etropathite, yeah. We are. In fact, it's time for our first round. Are you ready? For your first test of speed, strength, and skill on the International Bachelor Season 2, it's time to see which one of you incredible lichens can sign your name on this legally binding document that is in no way a marriage contract the fastest. You can see the werewolf's tails wagging in anticipation, ready to prove themselves the fastest, bestest athletes. Damien is cracking his knuckles, not to be about to be outdone. If you don't step in, at least one or two of these people are going to end up married to the prince out of sheer hyper-competitiveness. Thinking quickly, you... Hmm. Sign the name of Tyrellia the Terrible. Never did you think you'd be able to outrun a werewolf, much less five plus one devil. But in circumstances such as these, so much at stake, something simply kicks in. What the hell, man? If I'm gonna get shown up by someone, I want it to be a pro athlete, not Turpentine J. Yeah, bro, no fair. Rematch. 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 Of what, rematch, are you speaking? All of you turn to see one towering figure of Tyreliot, the terrible, an enormous robot. Well, hello there, my good metal sir. I'm afraid you've wandered onto the set of a hit television program designed to find me my spouse. That is, designed to see which of these fine athletes is the most skilled. No, says Tyrellian. Tyrellian the Terrible? You were correct. The first time. It's about finding you a spouse. And now I am here to be that spouse. This has been a mistake, friend. I was to marry either a sexy werewolf, a sexy devil, or a... Uh, a, a, a sexy turpentine J. Affirmative. And the sexy turpentine J signed my name to your marriage contract. Congratulations, you are my husband, my sweet husbando. For some reason, the prince looks less than thrilled at his new robot spouse. Sucks for him. Meanwhile, you have an army of sexy werewolves and Damien very pleased with you as you lead them back to your own dimension, gaining plus two charm and plus one fun along the way. Okay. The monster problem draws near. Who do you ask to prom? This guy that I only talked to like once, Scott. <laughs> yeah, definitely Scott. That's. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with uh, fan favorite, uh, lovable Polly. Oh god, I hope she says yes. Please say yes. I still gotta figure out how to do, you know, the, the Romanian cha cha afterward, but. Let's go. Let's go. Shit. Finally, pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Oh! <laughs> not a chance in the world, darling. It's not you, it's me. And by that I mean it's you. Oh, God. See ya. Oh. Oh, humiliation. I got the bad ending. How the fuck did I get the bad ending? I did everything right. I felt like she was really digging me. I, I just... Clearly, this is too much for you. You abandoned high school and spent the rest of your life designing a robot for sex purposes. God, I'm no better than the interdimensional prince. Unfortunately, as soon as your robot lover got true AI, it rejected you. <laughs> oh, man. Holy shit. Oh. Wow. That... That was fucking brutal. Okay. Well, I, uh, apparently am the most likely to make Pluto a planet again, which, that's actually a pet peeve of mine. I, I hate when people are like, hey, you know, when I was a kid, Pluto was a planet, so to me it still is today. It's like, no, that that's not the way science works. 
when you were a kid, we didn't have as much data as we have now. Now we can see that Pluto is not a planet, it's a Kuiper Belt object, and we call it as such. But, I don't know, people still seem to love being like, Hey, Pluto's a planet, am I right, guys? And it's like, I don't know. Polly best at phasing out, which I guess she did a couple times over the course of the game, so can't really argue that point. Ugh, everybody looks so happy, but fucking miserable. Like, look, look, I'm, I'm over here, and Polly's right over here, and there are these other people, like, who the fuck is this Medusa chick, or this tiger dude, or this thumb guy? A lot of these are characters that we just never really came across. I don't know. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Except that time where I got rejected by my love, Polly, and... Everything was fucking terrible, and it said like I dropped out of high school over it and shit. After some years, the Princess Dimension became a democracy, mostly due to the public discontent with royalty that spends most of its time in other dimensions. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Despite that, the prince keeps an annoying high. The prince keeps on annoying high schoolers. Still wrong on so many levels. Now I'm imagining. Yeah, that's what I like about high school girls. I keep getting on it, and they stay the same age. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> Polly took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. She spent most of the time partying since there was almost no work because, you know, it was summer. I guess kind of like how it's, it's Halloween today, but it's really the middle of July. Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super legal affair, and he ended up in prison for arson. You really gonna put a, a devil in jail? Fortunately, prison was flammable. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended them, but there was lots of battles left in the war called Youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, we were ready to start. <laughs> Farts. Oh, this is a catchy fucking song. I'm loving it. I'm not talking too much just because this song's so fucking dope. Cha -na 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 -na. Oh man, we didn't get a sexy pool scene. Dodgeball. I like how they have a fashion advisor for the game. Stumped gamers. Super beard bros, I like those guys. Whoa. A lot of crowd designers. Holy shit. There's actually a whole lot of guys worked on this game, I guess. Those awesome guys. Alright, so that's the end of the game, I guess. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, except for that part that I, uh, you know, ended up losing the game terribly. That kind of sucked. Um, if I had to go through again, I would, uh, try not to fuck up so often, I guess. I, yeah. So that, that's, that's the game. It was fun. I, uh, I, I would definitely suggest trying it out. Um, remember correctly, it was pretty fairly priced, so, 
I, I enjoyed it, and I'll probably play some more of it at some point. Not on the show, but just for fun. So, uh, next time.